This video from Gospel Online explains what the birth of Jesus tells us about him. Now, the story of the birth of Jesus is told in millions of locations around the world in mid to late December, and yet its significance is usually lost. The nativity story finishes with baby Jesus in a manger, despite the fact that the Bible teaches that Jesus was born to be saviour of the world, God's appointed king, and God's son. And I'm going to unpack all of this in the course of this presentation. Please do subscribe to this channel and click on notifications to hear when a new video has been posted. Okay, so let's get into this then. Um, Jesus was born to save people from sin. Now, part of the nativity story is the angels telling shepherds to go to see the baby Jesus. But notice the reason why they were told to go. We read that there is born to you this day in the city of David a saviour who is Christ the Lord. You see, he was born to be a saviour. His name, Jesus, comes from the Hebrew name Joshua, which means saviour. But what was it Jesus was going to save people from? The parallel account in Matthew's Gospel tells us, and she, Mary, will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So Jesus was born to save his people from their sins. But who is or were his people? Well, it's clear that Jesus was born a Jew. He could trace his family tree right back through David to Abraham. And when he was born, his parents brought the relevant offerings to the temple in Jerusalem, as were prescribed under the ancient Jewish law. Yet, despite being a Jew, he was destined to have an impact on all people, whether they were Jews or Gentiles. The old man Simeon, when he saw baby Jesus, he understood that he would one day grow up to be the saviour of the world. And he said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So he clearly believed then that Jesus, the baby that he was seen before him, was born to save people from their sins. Now, that was Jesus as a baby. By the time Jesus was a grown man, people were expecting someone to come and save them from their sins. When they heard of Jesus, the men of a city called Sychar said, For we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the saviour of the world. So you've got those words again. They believed that Jesus was born to be the saviour of the world. Jesus being born to save the world of sin became a fundamental part of the gospel which the apostles preached. So, for example, the apostle Paul said, from this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a saviour, Jesus. And the apostle John said, we have seen and testify that the father has sent the son as a saviour of the world. Well, how exactly does Jesus save us from sins? Well, first of all, let's be clear that everyone sins. Uh, the Apostle Paul, in writing his letter to the believers in Rome, said, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And also, let's be clear, that we die because of our sins. Uh, again, the Apostle Paul, writing in that same letter, said, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus then offers us forgiveness for those sins and in so doing breaks this vicious circle. The Apostle Peter said this to the Jewish council. He said, Him, Jesus, God has exalted to his right hand to be Prince and Saviour, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. The Apostle Paul made the same point when writing to Timothy. He said, by the appearing of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. 
But here's the thing, and this is crucial. For this to work, for Jesus to be able to save you and me from our sins, we've got to repent. As the Apostle Peter preached, he said, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Is this making sense? Uh, please do tell us in the comments. OK, so the birth of Jesus, it tells us that he was born to be a saviour. It also tells us he was born to be king. Now, you may remember from the nativity story that when uh, wise men came from the east, they asked, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Well, they weren't the only ones to be anticipating a new king at this time. Herod, who thought himself to be the king of the Jews, was worried that they said another king had been born in the city of Jerusalem, as that clearly presented a threat to him. So he consulted with the leaders of the Jews who said that the ancient prophet Micah had said the kind that the king would indeed be born in Bethlehem. They quoted the prophet where he said, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So even years and years before Jesus was born, the expectation was that when he was born, he was born to be king. A little more immediately prior to his birth, when the angel of the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary to tell her she was going to have a son, he made it clear to her that her son was destined to be king. He said, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and we call the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob, Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. During his ministry, some 30 years later, Jesus' followers expected him to be king. The man called Nathaniel exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Immediately after the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000, we read that Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king. He departed again to the mountain by himself alone. And again, when Jesus made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, just one week before his crucifixion, the people praised him, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And at the end of his mortal life, when Jesus stood on trial for his life, his being a king was the central issue made by the prosecution. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born and for this cause have I come into the world. And then when Jesus was crucified, Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Jesus being a king continued to be a key element of the gospel, which the apostles taught. In the Greek city of Thessalonica, there was a revolt against the Christians, where the charge against them was, these are all acting to the decrees, contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. Well, as king, Jesus has a kingdom, which everyone is invited to be part of when he returns to the earth from heaven. As the apostle Peter wrote, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. However, we can only be part of that kingdom if we first repent. As the Apostle Paul said, God commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. Are you still with me? Is this still making sense? Please tell us in the comments. So Jesus was born to be a savior. Jesus was born to be king. Well, now we come to the third key thing, which the birth of Jesus tells us about him. He was to be born 
the Son of God. And the way this worked was Mary conceiving without the help of Joseph, something she was told to expect. So Matthew's Gospel tells us, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. <clears throat> After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. The so-called virgin birth was anticipated by the prophets of the Old Testament. Matthew goes on to refer to the prophet Isaiah when he said, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord of through the prophets saying, behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son. Jesus being God's son was reinforced when Mary and Joseph brought him back to Nazareth as a young child. When he, Joseph, arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. In his letter to the Christians in the province of Galatia, Paul wrote, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. But for Jesus, the Son of God, to redeem you and me from our sins, we need to repent and prepare for judgment when Jesus returns to the earth. As the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. We've seen then that the birth of Jesus as set out in the Bible teaches us that he was born to save us from our sins, to set up God's kingdom on earth, and that he was both son of Mary and son of God. This is not a cute story from 2000 years ago. It's God's offer of salvation to you and me. Please do explore the gospel online here on YouTube. Subscribe and click on notifications to hear when a new video is being posted. And you can find us at our website and on the main social media channel. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.